Hey everybody, welcome to my channel and to today's video. So today's video is going to be my oddball makeup techniques video that you guys did request that I would do. So I'm going to show you how I created this look today using all of my interesting and not so common makeup techniques that you will see some of the other creators do. As you probably can tell, um, by some of my makeup that I don't follow all the trends. I do what I want to do because this is what I like. That's what you should do if you like the way you do your makeup and you have your own interesting fun ideas and trends and you want to do your own thing. You don't have to be like everybody else. You can do your own thing. And so that's what I'm talking about in this video today because I'm a wacky crazy gal and I love to film YouTube videos. I love makeup. I love eyeshadow palettes and I love doing creative things with makeup. This is what is my therapy. This, this is what makes me happy. It gives me peace. It makes me feel happy inside. Not that I feel like I need to wear makeup for anybody else, because I don't, but it is kind of like an art form for me, and it's nice to just sit down, put it on, talk to you guys, and share my love of makeup with you. So if you guys like makeup like I do, you don't necessarily need to be my age, but I am 51. I am a wife and mom. I have a little girl with special needs who's also battling cancer right now. And I just like to create fun content. I'm not here to blow up on YouTube. I'm here to just create fun content that I want to film and um, that I think is fun and interesting. I like to do different series on my channel, try out different ideas. So if you guys like varied content, you don't want to see the same thing you see everywhere else, I'm a channel for you. I think you guys should subscribe today and also hit the like button so that you guys um, can let me know that you like this video. And if you um, would be so kind, if you have the opportunity right now to watch the video all the way through, that'd be great. It really does help with my watch time. And in addition to helping with my watch time, you know, it just gets my channel more views and um, it gets more recommended if you like it and you watch it all the way through. If you don't have time to do that right now, you can always do it, put it on in the background, watch it when you have time. Either way, it really does help. And if you can do that, I would appreciate it. Thanks so much. Okay, so we're going to get started today. I'm going to move into the tutorial portion of this video. So the, the whole point of this is for you guys to see how I put my makeup on. It's not, it's kind of a tutorial, but not really. Um, it's just different techniques that I see myself doing that I don't see a lot of other people doing. Like I don't see a lot of people wearing their eyeshadow this way. I don't see a lot of people wearing their blush this way. Um, I do see reels and TikToks and things about trends and hacks and how to make your face look more lifted and all these different things, which is fine. But at the end of the day, I know what I like to do and I'm kind of stuck in the past with the makeup look that I wear. Um, makeup trends now do not revolve around what I'm doing. But that doesn't, that doesn't matter to me because I'm me and you're you, you're uniquely you and that's why you're also part of this channel. So we're going to move into the tutorial portion now and I hope you guys enjoy my wacky techniques video. Let's get started. Okay, welcome to the techniques and tutorial portion of this video. So basically, like I said in the intro, the idea of this video is to show you my weird techniques that I like to do. Now, everybody does their makeup differently. I myself um, am very, very uh, weird about how I do things. So the first thing I do, the first thing I do when I do my face, now I've moisturized it, it's washed, it's clean, everything, is that I put on my, eye, my, my eyeshadow primer. And I know that sounds weird, but I don't set it, but I like it to set down to make sure that it's not overly um, tacky or anything when I go in to do my um, eyeshadow because um, I'm, I'm, by the way, I'm using the Ulta eyeshadow primer. Um, it's just um, my favorite right now. It's kind of what I like to use. I would use the Milani for years. And here's the thing, like, and then I tap over it with the brush because I have a tendency, let me get my mirror. I have a tendency of going overboard with the primer, but I, I blend it in with a brush. So I don't know if anybody else does that. I apply it with my fingers, then I blend it with a brush. Well, wait till you see some of the other things that I do. Okay, so the foundation, I do my foundation next. I do not use a primer. I don't use a primer um, ever. Um, doesn't mean I've never used a primer or don't own primers, but I figure I've never really noticed a difference in using a primer. 
Um, and the only time I ever really use one is for when I'm outside on a really hot day. That's it. Other than that, primers are kind of useless to me, so I don't really use them. So what I have here is I have my foundation brush and I have my wet sponge, and I do both. I apply with both, so you're going to see that now. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to use my Catrice True Skin. I have two shades. I have Warm Vanilla, and I have Neutral Porcelain. Neutral Porcelain's too light. Um, warm um Warm vanilla is more yellow, and so this just kind of counteracts the yellow, and it makes it a little bit, it is a little too light for me still, um, and I do one pump of each, so I do use a lot of foundation, so that's something to keep in mind, okay? So I have my foundation on the back of my hand. I like the consistency of this foundation. I think it's really, really good. Um, I prefer uh, a runnier consistency rather than a really thick consistency. Now, here is where I differ from most people. I like to, I don't like to dip my brush in or dip my sponge into my foundation. What I like to do is apply it to my face first. I use a e.l.f. like paddle brush. Um, this is like, I use this as a um, kind of a, how should you say, I spread the foundation on my face. Now I do have a lot of foundation on my hand. I do use two pumps. So obviously I probably use more and you can see this is still pretty light. You see how it's still pretty light, you guys? Okay, I'm looking in the viewfinder. You're gonna have to um, forgive me because I don't have my mirror in front of me. It's kind of hard for me to hold a mirror and do my foundation at the same time, obviously. And it's a handheld mirror. So I'm just gonna make sure that I have that spread around. I gotta add some to my nose. Okay, so you'll see that once I got it on and I've got all of the foundation um, off my hand, I go ahead and I spread the foundation out and around so it's kind of even throughout my face because if I don't do this, I might end up with some um, bald spots, you know what I mean? So there's that. Now I have that brush. Now I take a foundation brush, like a, you know, stippling brush. This is an e.l.f. brush. I can't remember which one it is. I think it's the Flawless Complexion. Yeah, something like that. Or it's a blending brush. Okay, so then I blend. I start blending this. Now, I know this is too light, but see, here's the thing where I find I can kind of make up for it. If I have a foundation shade that doesn't really work, I put a lot of color on my face anyway, and it really kind of balances it out. So I really work that in with my brush um, and really just you know, kind of stipple it in, spread it around. Um, and I'm gonna finish doing that and then I'll move on to the next technique because it takes me a while to do this. Um, Cause I do have a lot of foundation on my face. So let me just finish blending and I'll move to the next step, my next weird step. Okay, so yeah. Sometimes I worry about brush streaks or that it didn't get blended properly. So then I take a very liberally, and I talk about liberally, this has a lot of water in it sponge and then I just kind of go over all of my face and when I do my foundation I take my foundation all the way around my mouth because I don't want to miss any spots so my found my lips look like they have a little bit of foundation on them but that's okay I don't mind that um, so basically I just kind of make sure that my, my foundation is extra smooth just by using a sponge. And the coverage on this is pretty good. Like right here, I noticed that I don't have as much coverage, but that's okay because see, then we do the concealer and then it doesn't really matter at that point. So well, let me get out of concealer and I'll show you what I do with concealer. Okay, I have got my Zoeva brush that I use for my concealer. This one has a nail polish mark on it. That's how I know that this one is my, for my concealer. I'm using today the e.l.f. Um, Hydrating Camo Concealer. Now, contrary to what most people are doing these days, and I've seen people do the dot here and the dot here, I swear to God, Okay, if you hear drums in the background, my husband is practicing drums. He has to play tomorrow at church, so he needs to practice. So please forgive me if that bothers you. I'm so sorry. Um, I still feel like I'm living back in 2016, 2017, because I am very liberal with the concealer. So I apply it here, 
here, here, here. I just full on, not the full on triangle like whatever, but this is a very high coverage concealer and it's hydrating. It's not the regular, um, so right, so there we go. So we got the concealer. Now I'm gonna take my brush, which is the Zoeva brush. I washed all my brushes just for this video. <laughs> they needed to be washed though. Okay, so just take my brush and I start blending. And I really take that down onto my cheek. Or you know that inner portion right there. So what coverage I lost with the foundation, I make up for by this. And I know it's very light, but um, yeah. And I take it all the way up into that inner socket of my eye and I take it all the way up here and I really, you could say that I do the triangle method. Just gonna blend out the other side and <laughs> we'll move to the next step. Okay, just gonna take whatever's remaining on that concealer brush and I'm just gonna brush it on the tip of my nose and the bridge. I don't really contour my nose. Probably should learn how, but anyway, so there's that. Just for extra, make sure it's extra blended, take, flip it up, flip over the sponge and I'm just going to make sure that I press that in and give it an extra blend. I know this is very extra, brushes and a sponge, but I literally am one of these people. <laughs> I am one of these people. Okay, so now the next step we're gonna do, okay, we have two powders, okay? So we are going to use an under eye powder and we're going to use a setting powder. Okay, so technically this isn't an under eye powder, um, but I use it as an under eye powder. This is sadly not available anymore. This is the Reserve Your Cabana pow uh, powder from uh, Wet n Wild. I was so thankful this isn't a big pan, but I've hit pan on it. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do once this runs out, but here you go. So I have a small kind of under eye brush and this is what I use for my under eyes. I like this because it's a luminous powder. Some people in the back in the day used this for um, highlighter, um, but I know that I watched Kelly Strack on YouTube and she's the one that suggested this and I have done this ever since. See, so she suggested it. And um, yeah, and I, it, it's always stuck with me. So I just take that Reserve Your Cabana powder on this brush right here. And um, I like it just like it just set my under eyes with it. Just my under eyes. I don't use a regular powder. Occasionally I'll use the e.l.f. Halo Glow powder for my entire face. Or if I'm doing a cream, con a cream bronzer, cream blush kind of situation, I will not set my face. If you guys wanna see that routine, I will show you that routine as well. But we are using all powders today, so this is the all powder version. Okay, so CoverGirl Clean Fresh Powder. I don't know what shade I have, but this is a powder that I like to use for my face. Kelly Gooch likes this powder. It's affordable, it's from CoverGirl, and I like to use, if I can find it, hold on please. I like to use this Morphe brush, this kind of slanted brush. One thing I will note about me and overall is I prefer small brushes for every aspect of my face. Small for my face, small for my eyes. Um, I feel like I can just get more precision, but you'll also notice that I will sometimes go in with a bigger brush at the end once I know. So I have my Clean Fresh Powder and I'm just gonna start applying it to the rest of my face, okay? So the rest of my face, everywhere that I did not apply, that I did not apply a um, the Reserve Your Cabana powder. Now, here's the thing that I wanna say that I do very liberally, okay? So that I don't know that most people do. A lot of people have dry lips and they don't want their drips to, lips to be powdery or dry or to dry up. I go like this and I powder around my lip line. It's very important and, and I'll tell you why I do it in a minute. So I'm gonna just do that. and even on the edge of my lips. Powder the rest of my face before I, don't powder your eyes because that's, you're not setting your primer. Okay. The reason I set my face like that and I set my lips like that 
is to prevent, I feel like it's an extra step to prevent any sort of feathering or bleeding. If you're anybody that's my age, you might have some lip lines or you might have, you know, you know, lines around your lips because of your age. Um, I fortunately don't have that yet, but I do have some lipsticks that kind of like to creep out a little bit. And um, I do have a couple spaces in my lip line that I have to be aware of. So there's that. Now, next thing we're gonna do, I am going to get out my favorite bronzer brush, which is not a typical bronzer brush for most people, okay? Um, I do not contour, but I like to brontour. I'm a brontour person, which basically means I contour with bronzer. So if you're like that, that's, that's my next step. So I have this slanted brush. I don't like using fluffy brushes on the face unless I'm blending it out once I place it. So that's typically what I do. I use smaller brushes, brushes to place my product than larger, blush, br larger brushes to blend it out. Okay, so let me just grab a bronzer. Uh, hold on one second. I'm gonna grab probably one of my favorite bronzers of all time. This is the NYC Smooth Skin um, Powder in Sunny. I loved NYC. Um, they weren't like the best brand in the world, but some of their face products I loved, and I loved this bronzer. And I remember you back in the day, back in the beginning of my channel, it was still available at Walgreens, and I got this for like $2.99. It's one of my favorite bronzers, obviously off pan. So I'm very generous with this. I'm very generous with this. I dip this brush in here. I do tap it off slightly just to make sure that I don't go overboard, and I literally start from the top of my ear like I would a contour. and I bronze, and I take it all the way in to here. I love bronzer, I love blush, I love everything. You guys should know this by now, but I, and I go in twice, like, I real and I really take it high, like up into the temple, and bring it down, kinda underneath the cheek, A separate brush for that okay so now we're gonna do I'm, I'm gonna do the other half off camera but then I'm going to take my bronzer and I'm gonna bronze this whole area over here now I think this bronzer is on its last legs I'm gonna use it until it's used up it doesn't smell bad I've had it for a long time it is a powder product powder products I tend to use beyond their expiration date which might not be the smartest thing in the world um, do what you do you do you I'll do me, and um, that's how I roll. Okay, so there's my bronzer on the forehead and on the um, cheekbone. Then I am, I don't take foundation down my neck. I'm just afraid it's gonna get on my clothes, but I will bronze my neck. So I will take it to my jawline, and I really focus a lot of it right here. Now sometimes I do use a contour right here because I am getting a little jowly. I'm attempting to change that. I'm attempting to get rid of this double chin. I've already lost five pounds, you guys, so I'm super excited about that. And I literally just started my diet two days ago, so I've already lost five pounds. I'm very thrilled. I'm very strict with myself. I've got my water here. Normally you see me with my beer or wine or soda, but I've got my water here. Let's take a sip, everyone. I don't like water, but I'm determined. I've got to lose about 80 pounds. I know that sounds extreme, but anyway, one pound at a time. Okay, so I really just bring that bronzer all the way down. I do have some redness on my neck, so sometimes I, you know, I don't really look completely put together. I just don't like putting makeup down here. I just don't like doing it. So um, there's that. So let me just do the other side off camera, and then we are going to go to blush. Because my blush application very similar to this. Um, I do not follow the trends. And if you guys have been following along and you know me at all by this point, I will always say in my videos, I do what I wanna do. I do what makes me happy. I don't follow the trends. I don't, you know, I don't actually look at my makeup and say, oh, that looks more lifted. Do you know what I'm saying? So like, I do it the way I wanna do it. And if it looks, doesn't look bad to me, then I just keep doing it. And if it looks bad to somebody else, or it's not on trend, then that's their problem, not mine. So let me just bronze the other side of my face, or bronze tour, as I like to call it, because I literally, I mean, that's like, 
that's like contour for me because I don't I don't like I, I I like warmer tones on my face and I don't like contour I just think it's just too gray and it just it's kind of it serves a purpose for certain things but yeah let me just do the other side of my face and I will continue with blush okay you guys so we are moving on to blush now and I have my morphe blush brush this is my slanted brush this is my favorite brush to use for my powder blushes. I have a few different brushes I like to use for powder blushes. It just depends on what kind of blush I'm wearing. Um, I, I like this round brush that's kind of dense um, for um, more targeted application. And I like this one for like luminous blushes or blushes that are ultra pigmented. This is a goat hair brush. So I feel like it's a, it, you know, it's, it's a small brush. This is the brush that Nikki Tutorials used to use for contour, and I bought it for that back in the day when I was watching Nikki more. I still love her, but I don't really watch her channel these days. But this is a nice small brush that blends color, um, and you can build up really nicely with the brush. But this brush is my favorite to use. It's a Morphe brush. I think it's the 150. Oh, don't ask me. It's all worn off. But anyway. What I'm gonna use is, I'm gonna use one of my Romantic Beauty blushes and highlighter duos for this video. Um, I don't always use duos, but this is the deepest shade, the deepest shade for um, their blush. So I am going to dip in there a few times, tapping off, and I am a very liberal blush applicator. That's about the only thing that's liberal about me is my makeup application, I'm just saying. Okay, so smile a little bit because I am an apples of the cheek blush girl and I take my blush all the way up, wait till you see it. Okay, here we go. All right, so we're gonna tap this off now. I'm just gonna dot first, just to see my pigment, pigment level, perfect. Okay, I love the pigment level of that. Look at what I'm doing, you guys. I'm going in like a full C. I'm going from the cheek all the way up to the temple. That is what I do, okay? Now, if I'm doing my eyeshadow differently, which I rarely do it differently, I have a more dramatic eyeshadow style. So what's nice about doing it this way is that my eyeshadow kind of flows into that extra color because I really have an interesting eyeshadow technique that I want to share with you that I don't see a lot of other people doing. So this is a beautiful blush. Now, you were probably saying, oh, that's plenty of blush. Not for me. I want more. Tap this off. Be very careful. Tap your cheek lightly just to check your pigmentation level. I love a pigmented cheek, okay? And I literally take it fully on the apple and up. Now, a lot of people these days are applying their blush up here and they're not applying it down here on their face. I like to have color on my face. Now this probably looks a little bit extreme, but, but once the rest of the makeup is done, you're not going to really notice that. So for me, that is how I like to do my blush. So, and it's typical, this is the way I do it every single time. And I do literally take it all the way up to my temple and beyond, beyond my brow even, I go that high. Okay, so let me just do the other cheek and then I will show you how I do highlighter. It's very similar, but not as low of a placement. So yeah, that's very, very pigmented. So literally sometimes what, what I will do is if I find that it's too strong, I will take a little bit of translucent powder and with a fluffier brush and I will go over that. And we'll probably do that today because I did go a little out of hand, I got it out of hand. But this, this is how I like to wear my makeup, see? So you have to just, you know, stay, stay true to you. Stay true to you. Follow the trends if you want to, but not everybody's the same, and we all have different face shapes. So not every trend is gonna work for you anyway. So if you like the way you're doing your makeup, by all means. I'm never gonna be one of those people, let me just say this right now, never gonna be one of those people that's gonna do, this is the right way to do your makeup, and this is the wrong way to do your makeup. I hate those videos so much. I mean, I myself notice a difference about which one I like more versus less, but if somebody wants to do their makeup the other way, I'm not gonna get on here and get preachy and say, especially as somebody who's self-trained, that that's the wrong way to do your makeup. Okay, rant over. 
I'm just not a judgmental person. Okay, so what I am going to do is I am going to take um, a fluffier brush such as this. This one's probably too fluffy or too big. I can't take my hair, but I'm gonna take the Real Techniques brush, okay? I'm gonna take the Real Techniques um, blush brush and I am gonna dip into um, the CoverGirl powder. No, actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna dip into the Reserve Your Cabana powder. Sometimes I do do this because it does give my cheeks a little bit of luminosity. It's not a blush topper, but it also kind of mellows the blush out and it makes it seem more blended when you have a little bit of a sheen over it. So take that, go in there with your fluffy brush, tap it off, and then I'm going to just liberally take that over that color and just kind of soften it a little bit with that little bit of that powder. Now it might not be very noticeable to you, but it's noticeable to me. So. Now remember, we haven't done our eyeshadow yet. Once you do your eyeshadow, if you do your eyeshadow like me, then you'll see. You'll see it all just comes together. Okay, so that Reserve Your Command, I just softens it a little bit. Maybe it doesn't look like it to you, but it does to me. Okay, so now you're going back to your highlighter. I'm going to take the Real Technique Setting Brush, which has always been my favorite highlighter brush. Um, no, this is a Moda, but it's very similar to the Real Techniques setting brush. And I am going to basically use the highlighter that comes in the Duo. And I'm going to load my brush up, tap it off, and I am going to do that half moon shape following the top of the blush, but only going to about the center of the eye right there, all the way up. These are nice highlights. They're not, they're not overly, they're not overly um, shiny or metallic. And this is very, this is very, you know, 2016, but the tip of the nose, bridge of the nose, and the cupid's bow. I should also point out if I use a cream contour, and sometimes I will, even if I've done all of this, I will use a cream contour right under my lip and right here under my nose, just to make my nose less long. Um, but yeah, so let me just put the highlighter on the other side and then we're gonna go on to brows, you guys. <laughs> okay, can't forget this very important step. I don't do this every time, but I do this, do this quite frequently. I, I spray my face but not with the setting spray. I only spray my face with water. I don't know why, to me, setting sprays aren't necessarily needed, um, but I do like to spray my face with water just to, just to minimize any sort of powdery effect I may have on my face. So I'm very liberal with it. I just, I have a, this is the um, Wet n Wild Natural Finish setting spray bottle, but it's refilled with water. I've had this bottle for probably like three years. I need to just get another setting spray, but I don't use them, so. Just spray all over and just let that sit. Let that set in, and then we are gonna do our brows. Yeah, I'm a strong brow girl, so get ready for that. Okay, time for the brows. Okay, so. This is not popular these days, but this is my weird techniques video. So we're gonna do my technique. And this is the e.l.f. Um, cream liner and brow uh, pomade um, in, I think it's an ash brown, I'm pretty sure. I don't even know. But anyway, this is what I use for my brows. Not even playing with you guys. I fully embraced the pomade brow life which is not the way people use brow products now. Everybody's all talking about these brow pens and whatever. Um, so brush your brows first, okay? And then I'm going to dip into the pomade and I really can kind of control the shape or make whatever shape I want with this. So I start with the tail and I start at the arch. That's what I do. And then I go down and then I kind of drag my brow out just a little bit because I have been not down, but out. 
not out and up, but out and straight. Okay, so um, the way I've been doing my eyeshadow lately, it just kind of, it, it's kind of surpassed my brows, but I don't really care. I, like I said, you do you, boo. Okay, so um, just make the shape. Come in here, see that's, see it's a lot of pigmentation when you guys, you know, when you use pomade. You gotta be very careful. If you don't like pomades, you don't need to use pomade. But I find it's the quickest way to do my brows, really. It's the very quickest way. It's the easiest and the quickest. Um, but you don't have as much control because it's a very creamy product. So you have to just kinda be careful and make sure you get the right brow color. I could probably go with the lighter brown and it might look better, but it still has to be cool. You don't want a warm brow pencil if, you're, if your hair is dark brown, for sure. Gonna make sure it's not too warm. Okay, so, make sure it's like filled in all the way. Brush it through again, kind of, let's see. Yeah, that looks all right. See how fast that was? So then you just kind of brush it through And if you want, you can set it with a brow gel. Now, I don't really have a brow gel, but I, for the purposes of this video, I'm gonna just use this e.l.f. Clear Brow Gel. It doesn't really, it's not like, I need to get that the NYX one, but I don't want my brows to look crunchy either way, anyway. Um, so, I don't really use one, but I'm gonna use one today, just in case you're the kind of person that likes to do that. And I just, this is just a clear, clear gel. And it doesn't, it has decent hold, but it's not like gonna blow your mind or anything. Okay, let me just do the other brow and then we will start with the eyes. I know that we, that's what you're really looking forward to. So uh, stick around, we'll be right back. Okay, the moment you've all been waiting for, we are going to do eyeshadow now. And today's palette, the palette that I'm going to use is the Nomad Ireland Wild Atlantic White Palette. And I picked this palette for a couple of reasons. Um, I have a lot of greens in here, but I have some blues in here, and I have these kind of rusty orangey tones. I want to pick something that had a lot of variety in it. Um, I don't know how much I'm going to be playing with the greens today. I kind of want to do a blue and um, kind of terracotta kind of a look. And you guys are going to see how I do my specific technique, because it is very, very... Um, unique and interesting. I do find that I am going to, if I use the blue, I'm going to have to blend it out, so I will have to use some of the green, but you guys will see that this is how I do my eyeshadow. So what we're going to start with first is we're going to um, um, start with Keem Strand. Now, I am the kind of person that starts with my deepest color first. I am only going to do one eye for you on camera because I find that if I focus on both eyes, it's just way too much work. Once you do, once you, and it doesn't take me this long to put my makeup on, I'm talking through it, so I just want you to keep that in mind. I'm going to use the blue today, Keem Strand. And I start with the deepest color, and I use a flat, flat um, goat hair brush. I've had these brushes for a long time. I've never been able to find them again. Um, this is from a brand called Clover Collection, um, and I really, really love this. So what I typically do, I start with my outer corner, and I blend from there. So I rarely use transition shades, if at all. Sometimes I use a transition shade after I've started blending with the deep shade, and then I blend it out with a shade, but I use it as a blending shade versus a transition shade, if that makes sense. So we're going to start in the outer corner of the eye with Keem Strand, okay? This beautiful, beautiful kind of um, cornflower kind of blue, okay? Now, this is where I just pack it on first. Now, you gotta be careful because obviously you're, you've done your face makeup first. If you're doing the techniques the, the way that I'm doing them, then you've done your makeup first. So you've gotta be very, very careful. Sometimes I will get fallout right here and then I just really blow out that lower lash line, okay? So now that is what I'm going to do. Now, what I do after this is I will take a blending brush and I will blend the edges of this, but I will not blend it with another color. So I will take this and I'll blend the edges of it. And I will also blend it out. 
So I'm creating kind of a winged out look or shape with the eyeshadow. And you'll notice as you start blending it out, it's going to fade where you put it on that outer corner. I love this shade. It is truly a cornflower. Sometimes those cornflower blues really are kind of like a soft blue. They're a deep blue, but they're a soft blue. And they really kind of just blend away a little bit. This one's not blending away per se, but you'll see I'm not adding another color. This is all the same color, okay? And I'm taking it all the way out. So, this is where I will go back in. I will add some more Keem Strand right here and into the inner, into that outer socket area of the crease. And I've already blended the edges of that. Now I'm going to take a small, very, very small, tiny brush, dipping it into Keem Strand ever so slightly. And I am really going to extend that shape almost like that I'm really going to extend it see I've been doing this a lot lately you guys have probably noticed now you'll also notice right here I have a little bit of fallout so I'm going to blend down but I'm going to keep I'm going to keep that sharp edge right out there so see it's going past my brow if you've noticed that. It's going past my brow, all the way out past my brow. Now I still have not added a secondary color, which I oftentimes will not do. I will not add a second color. I will just keep that one color in the outer portion of my eye. Sometimes I will blend another shade over it. In this case, I might do that or I might not because I don't really know that I have any shades that I feel I could blend this out with. I probably could blend it out with one of the really neutral shades, but I don't really want to do that. So. So really kind of intensifying that, that wing shape. And then I'm just going to blend over the top of that and blend it right into the center of my eye. You'll see it's going right to the center or just past the center, okay? So this, I'm, I literally do this most of the time. Most of the time I do my eyeshadow, I'm doing this shape. I don't know why. I think it's because I'm a little bit older and my eyes are, eyes are a little bit downturned. So if I create the, this shape, it lifts my eye up a little bit. So, Keem Strand. I love this shade. I haven't used it yet. So this is a lot of fun. I usually just go straight for the greens with this. But take your time. I mean, sometimes you don't have the time to do anything this elaborate but this is just a technique that I've been doing that I don't see a lot of people do I used to see who was a crispy you guys remember crispy I loved her I used to watch her channel all the time and she did this big winged out shape and sometimes Annette does this too so um, I love this color oh my gosh it's so pretty so then I am going to get my color switch out now one thing I will say I use very few eyeshadow brushes when I actually uh, do my makeup and I will use the same brush for different colors. I will just take it in a color switch. I am also the person that will brush, wash my eye brushes after every use with just a gentle soap. Um, that way I can never have any sort of like sort of color trend, you know, disruption or anything such as that. So let me see. Am I going to use a green? I need a cool green. No, I'm not. Um, but I am going to okay so now what we're gonna do <laughs> okay this is where I get things get interesting I love to do a contrasting shade from the outer portion of my eye what I'm going to do today is I am going to go into ooh, Barati Castle I think that's what it's called and this is a little bit deep for an inner inner crease shade but I'm going to take it right there this is my inner crease shade so you'll notice it's not blue it's not green it's not cool it's warm and I'm using that tone on the inner portion of my crease now so just stick with me here I'm taking a very dense brush because I want the exact placement to be right here and I do take it almost all the way up to my brow you guys will see okay so we're gonna go into the I think it's called let me let me just double check Bunratty Castle. Bunratty Castle, okay? So we're going to go into Bunratty Castle. 
tap your brush off and I am going to take that and I'm going to place it. Now that's pretty deep. Normally I would like a lighter color for this, but for the sake of this example, I'm going to just roll with this, okay? So I'm not going to take it all the way up to my brow because it's pretty dark, but I'm going to leave it right there. And I'm going to take it almost all the way to the blue, but leave a tiny little space right there. Just a itty bitty tiny little space, okay? So this is a kind of a terracotta, or it's kind of like a brown. It's an orangish brown, it's really pretty. So I'm leaving that in, not on my lid, but I'm taking it from that inner corner of my eye up and into up above the crease, above the crease, not in the crease, but above the crease, and kind of like kissing the crease. And then I'm going to stop. So do you see the little gap right there? There's a small little gap right there, okay? So I am going to just dot, not blend, but just dot that shade very close to Keem Strand without blending into Keem Strand. Now, here is where the magic happens. You're going to take another brush. I'm just taking the brush with Keem Strand on it. That was the blending brush. This one from Lexi. I am going to go into the shade Malonhead. I think it's called Malonhead. This kind of yellowish green, okay? It's yellow enough to blend with the brown and it's also yellow and can blend into the blue. So I will find what I call a bridging shade. Now granted, I can't always use one palette. Sometimes I wanna get creative and I want a specific shade for a contrasting shade, so I'll bounce around on my palettes, but I have, you know, tons of palettes to use. But we're just using one palette for this, so you can see that you can do these kinds of looks. Um, this would be cool if you used a Bunratty Castle on the outer portion and you used one of the greens on the inner portion, because you have a lot of beautiful light greens to play with. But I am gonna take Malin Head right here. This is kind of like a yellowy, um, greenish shade. It's kind of like a peridot. I'm going to dip into that liberally and I'm going to run that in between those two colors, softening the edge of both of the colors on the inner portion of the crease. So do you see that there? You see that it's kind of making a little bit of a green tint into the keem strand. And it's softening the edge of that Bunratty Castle. So just take it like so. And that's your bridging shade. And then I am going to take some Malin Head and I am going to blend it into that top part near my brow bone. Okay. And I tend to do this. I, once, I, once I decide what I'm going to do for that, that center portion, I will extend that out and I will take it up above that wing, okay? So this is kind of like a highlighting shade versus a blending shade, but yeah, you guys get the point. So I like how this looks. See, I like that touch of yellowy green because it can blend into the brown as well as the blue. So it gives you a nice effect of bridging and kind of combining warm with cool which I have a lot of fondness for doing. I like to blend warm with cool. Okay, so you'll see that I am using the rest of that, that brow bone space for Malin Head, and it's kind of even softening that, that um, Keem Strand a little further. And then I really am gonna just take it, like I said, take it out and blend that, blend that, like that nice, wing that I've set up for myself. Okay, so there's that. So see, that's my technique. That's a major technique that I've been doing, you guys. Um, the lower lash line is pretty simple. Like, I don't really focus too much on the lower lash line, but for the sake of argument, what we're gonna do today is we are going to take the Lexi brush. Sometimes I will use a contrasting shade. If not, I will always use the outer corner shade that I'm using. Um, so today, what I'm going to do to keep it interesting is I'm going to go into this deep green right here. I'm gonna go into the deep green right here, okay? And um, so you can do this, you don't have to do this contrasting. 
and I really like to kind of meet it up to the edge of that. In this case, it's a different color. So, and I take it only two thirds of the way in. I don't like going all the way to the inner corner with my lower lash line shade because I don't want to close off my eyes. I want to open up my eyes. Now, I never used to be the kind of person who did inner corner work, but I've changed my tune, okay? There's that, okay? So, usually before I do lower lash line, um, what I do is I go in with my uh, glitter primer. The glitter primer is very necessary because um, it helps your um, shadows stay on better, helps them transfer less. I still have some transfer, but I am 51, so my eyes are, my lid, my, my, my eyes are getting more hooded as I grow older, but uh, still I'm very fortunate that they're not ultra hooded yet. So now just take a little bit. Oh, I grabbed too much because I thought I was doing two eyes. Okay, you're going to, um, on the bare space on your lid, you're gonna place, and I go all the way up to my crease with my shades, and they, they inevitably transfer. I mean, it's, it's unavoidable. If you do your makeup this way, and you keep your shades above your crease, your, sh your, your shimmers are gonna transfer. Okay, so there's that. While that sets down, I let that get a little bit tacky, and then I will pick a waterline pencil, and I never used to do this either, but I try to find one that is light, but not, I'm gonna pick this yellow, because I thought it would be fun. Um, I, lo I love the ColourPop waterline pencils, and, um, I always use a waterline pencil now, and I never used to. Okay, so we're going to, this one's a gold, it's metallic, I think. Yeah. Okay, so just line that lower inner rim. Hmm, I'm gonna take some Malin Head, okay? That's that same, same shade we used to bridge, and I'm going to take that into my inner corner. I like mattes in the inner corner. I'm not a real big fan of shimmers. And what I'll do is I'll kind of blend that down onto the lower lash line as well. Like I've liked to do the copper into the blue, um, but I think just for the sake of argument, we're gonna just do one shade on the lid and we're just gonna do a fun green. And um, I think I'm going to pick, well, no, I'm going to start with this green. No, I'm gonna start with the blue, okay. Cobb Harbor, I'm gonna start with the blue. And I like to do contrasting lid shades as well. So you'll see that in just a second. So I have the blue here. I will always spray my brush with water. Okay. And then I work from the outer portion of my lid into the inner portion. So we're just gonna put this Cobb Harbor out here. I don't wanna take it too far in because the blue, the Keem strand is on the outer corner and into the center, so we don't want to take the blue too far in. At least I don't want to take the blue too far in. And to keep it fun and interesting, we are going to do Ring of Kerry, and that's a yellow. It's a very gold yellow, almost an orangey yellow gold, um, and I think that will look really pretty contrasted with the blue. So, yeah, so you've got kind of a cool color and a warm color. So see, see what I'm talking about? You can do this. This is a little bit more of a flaky shimmer, but I think it's very pretty. So we're just gonna go ahead and put that right here on the inner portion of the lid and blend that into, this one is a little bit flaky because it really picks up very flaky. Probably should have used my finger, but let's see. I'm gonna carry and just bring that kind of up and over the blue a little bit, kind of tapping it together. It's a very pretty shade, okay? So then I will apply a liner mascara to the lids, um, to, to my eyes. I'm gonna do the other eye off camera, and then I'm gonna show you my lip techniques because I do do a lot of different things for my lips, but that is the eye look. So that's how I've created my shape and that's kind of how where I've been rolling with my eye looks lately. So that's my weird eye techniques. Hope you guys enjoyed that portion and I'm going to meet you at the end with the lip 
lip combos that I like to do. I always do like a really elaborate lip combo. Not always, but most of the time I do. So stay tuned for that. Okay, I'm gonna zoom you in for this last part because last but not least, we have to add a lip color. Now, you will notice I have two lip colors, one light lip color and one deep lip color. And I also have something that most of you do not use. I never see anybody use a lip brush. This is my best friend. I love this thing and it comes in very, very handy. So first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take your, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take your light lip color and I'm used to using Milani's Matte Anison Color Statement Lip, lip um, Color. It's a matte lip color um, that uh, is one of their older formulas. It's not their color finish formula. It's their regular color statement formula. I really, really love these. So I'm going to hit this all over my lips. This isn't as light as creme. Wait a minute, is this matte innocence? Yeah, it is, but we're gonna use it for the purposes of this video. Creme is even lighter. That's the uh, Seriously Satin Lipstick from e.l.f. But we don't need to have an ultra dark lip today. All right, so. Your whole lip color is going to be this light color. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to take a deeper color. This one is called Rum Raisin, and this is a Revlon Super Lustrous lipstick. I love these. Um, they're like my favorite lipsticks currently. And I'm going to take my lip brush, okay? I'm going to make sure that there's no product on it, and there's not. And I'm literally going to paint on the darker shade and the outer portion of my lips. That's really literally what I'm gonna do, okay? So, right here. I'm gonna do that. And I'm just gonna do that in all four corners. And so, yeah, that's what I like to do. So, just getting it on the edge. And even you can kind of line with this too. I've had this lip brush for forever. I just started using it recently and I absolutely love doing this. It's like one of my favorite things to do because you can just basically customize your lip color. If you have a lipstick that's too light or one that's too dark, you just combine them and mesh the two together. So you see you got the lighter shade on the inner portion and then the deeper shade on the outer portion, just like that. And then you can blend them together with the brush, um, or sometimes you might want to go in and put a little bit more light, um, more of the light lip color in, really on the center, like that, and really just blend those edges. Now, Super Lustrous Lipstick is a cream lipstick. The color statement lipstick is matte. So what you can do if you want, you can add a gloss or not add a gloss. I frequently am a lip blotter as well. I like to blot my lips as well. But for today's um, demonstration, I'm just gonna take a butter gloss. This one is in the shade Fortune Cookie, I think. No, this is Creme Brulee, okay? So let me just back this up a little bit. This is in Creme Brulee. I love the NYX Butter Glosses. They're some of my absolute favorite. And you're just gonna put it in the center where the lighter shade is. Not all, your whole lip, just the center. Just like that. And you smack your lips together and you're done. And there you have it. That is the final look. Those are my weird makeup techniques. I hope you guys had fun watching this video. It was definitely fun to create for you. It might've been on one of my longer videos, but you know what, that's okay. Um, you guys wanted to see it, so I filmed it for you. So I hope you enjoyed today. If you did, please be sure to give me a thumbs up. 
And if you haven't yet already subscribed, I hope you'll think about doing that today. That would really help me out being part of the DMBA crew. If you guys made it all the way to the end of this video, leave me a shamrock for Island Wild Atlantic Way. Since we use that Nomad palette, that'd be really awesome. So if I see a shamrock, I know you made it all the way to the end of this video. So thank you so much for watching you guys today. Board Hey Finger Hearts at Purple You. You're awesome and amazing. I am so happy to have you here. If you are a new subscriber, I'm so glad that you decided to join the channel today. And if you're returning, I'm so happy that as always to see you guys in the comments and um, I just love you all so so much so remember to fill your cup pour into yourself give yourself self-love get a lot of rest drink a lot of water take care of yourself but then remember go back out in the world love others as Jesus loved you okay because we all want to treat others as we'd like to be treated it's very very important that we all uh, are there to love support and nurture one another okay so thank you so much you guys for watching today i appreciate it so so much and i will see you in my next video okay ttfn bye